Last year, at the end of the year, I, I had some time, so I called my travel agent, Rita. I said, Rita, I have part of November free, and I just said the word Antarctica, and she flipped out. You have to go in November. It's when the penguins are mating. Okay, because like you need to see penguins have sex because, you, you know, hurry. And so I said, well, book that one. And so weeks later, I'm in a boat going through the Drake Passage on my way to the edge of the Antarctic Peninsula. And so for the first three days, there's nothing to do. There's no place to land. So I took lectures. And I made friends with Bob the geologist because Bob taught me about catabatic winds and glacier ice and sea ice and how uh, fresh water goes into cold weather systems and it freezes. And that's why NASA says there's more ice at the bottom of the world and all the climate change and I see the world's, the world's getting colder, you socialist. But the real explanation is, and it's a really awful thing, that the, the fresh water goes into systems it's never been to before. It is pretty much free of saline, so it freezes very quickly. The water level doesn't rise. It's just a distribution of fresh water. Unfortunately, it pushes down the more dense, saltier water, which contains all the nutrients for the phytoplankton, which is the microorganism, which gives the world half of its oxygen through photosynthesis. The phytoplankton are also the principal food of krill, which is the principal food of whales, seals, and penguins. And so a food chain is being broken down. This has been happening for decades. And not only are the animals losing, but you animals and this animal is losing as well because we have less natural oxygen factories. They're getting shut down year after year because not only do people keep breeding and keep flushing toilets and taking jet airplane rides, I'm a perpetrator, but we keep not listening to science and we keep saying, oh, the, what a bunch of... And so at one point, I'm, I'm standing uh, amongst a bunch of breeding, braying, crapping Gentoo penguins with Bob the geologist. And so here are all these beautiful penguins covered in their own excrement, running after each other. Ah, ah. It's, like an, it's like a weekend in Amsterdam. Um, <laughs> And so the penguins are, you know, very sexy. It's breeding time. And, and so I'm standing with Bob amongst a bunch of Gentoo penguin. And I said, so, so tell me what a citizen might not understand about global climate change. He said, well, first off, it's real. This is what I do for a living. I live nine months of the year in this area for the last decade and a half. I really, really, really know what I'm talking about. He said, what you're going to see, uh, what you don't know, is that it's worse than you think. And what you're going to see in this century is a rising sea level to the point of catastrophe. So I said, what do you mean? He's like coastlines changing. So I said, you have a, you have a place like New Orleans. Uh, could that be impacted like no more Bourbon Street? He said, something like that. I said, what about the state of Florida with water on both sides? Is it possible you could have rising sea level where all of a sudden Florida turns into a subliterate, science resisting, uh, uh, President Obama hating single tooth cracker Atlantis? And he saw this look of gentle hope in my eyes like, and of course I'm kidding. He said, Henry, I said, well, you know, and he said, yeah, that's, that's what we're up against. And that's what you're seeing at the bottom of the world. That is the change. And so.